Finally got the wife's truck all cleaned up, vacuumed out and everything. I'm gonna see if you can see those hail dents any better. I mean, I don't know if the camera is gonna see much different, but from my, from my view, it's a little bit easier to see some of them. Um, but you know, like I said, top of the cab is probably the worst of it. I don't know what it is, but it feels like a fall day right now in the low 60s, maybe actually it's probably only like 50, 58 to 60 degrees right now. It's a little bit chilly, but I got my LMP shop shirt on. It actually breaks the wind pretty nice, but we're going to be doing a video today on who built the better truck in the 90s. And it's going to be a Ford versus Dodge side by side. And I'm going to try to be as non-biased as possible and try to point out all the flaws on the Dodge trucks that I know of and that I've encountered and I've owned probably 40 different Dodge trucks now at this point. And uh, I've never kept very many of them for longer than a couple of months at a time because of the business that we're in, which by the way, you can enter to win both these trucks right here, right now that we're gonna be going over. So keep that in mind, hit that link in the description below. The giveaway for the dual entry period on both these trucks does end this Sunday. So when you see this video, you probably only got like 24, 48 hours left, then that giveaway is gonna be completely over. So don't waste any time, hit that link, place an order, every $1, 30 entries to win right now. It's our best multiplier, best chance, two giveaways, you're getting entered into both. So if you've ever wanted to enter a giveaway, and you're like, oh man, I just don't know what my odds are. First off, they're a lot better than you probably think. I mean, we are a growing brand, but we still are not one of those companies that's got millions of people and hundreds of thousands of people entering, um, hopefully someday. But at the moment, that's still not the thing. We are working towards that. Of course, that is always the goal of a business is to grow. But at the moment, your odds are still actually probably more ridiculously good than you actually realize. So hit that link, get entered, because right now you're getting entered in two giveaways for the price of one, which means you are essentially doubling your chances of winning right now with our highest bonus. So I wouldn't pass that up. Listen to them both purr. Old school diesel, no emissions, just raw exhaust, just puffing out the tailpipes. Um, we're gonna turn these things off and then we're gonna go over some things on these trucks. I'm gonna try to be as thorough and try to keep this video, if I can, under 10, 12 minutes because there's really not that many in depth things to go over on these trucks, in my opinion, because they're both. They're both great vehicles. And quick disclaimer, guys, at the beginning of this video, I am not going to be bashing either one of these trucks for not being good quality built or reliable vehicles. Um, you know, you guys might say in the comments otherwise, but in my honest opinion, these are the two best built trucks from the 90s. And when I say that, okay, hear me out. I'm talking everything from engines, transmissions to the trucks themselves, the capability, the longevity, and stuff like that. So in my opinion, these are the two best built trucks in the 90s in terms of diesel pickups from the big three brands that everybody knows. Um, why do I not buy very many GM diesels, especially the old stuff? I don't believe they were great quality vehicles. My opinion, my preference, you guys can argue it otherwise and say, oh, the, the Detroit diesels were the first Duramaxes. They were amazing trucks. You might think that and believe that, and that is totally fine. Since I do not believe that, I'm not going to buy something to give away to one of you guys that I am not confident is a great vehicle. Everything that I buy and do modifications to, or sometimes like this truck, we don't have to do much to because it was just like a clean two owner, pristine OBS Ford that was very tastefully configured. I buy and put together trucks that I believe are gonna be great trucks for you to open. So now that I got that out of the way, let's get into the first topics here and go through this as thoroughly as possible. This truck is a 1997 Ford F-250. It's got a 7.3 power stroke, and I believe it is called the ZF5 manual transmission. This truck 
is super clean, super stout, runs and drives, steering as tight as you can probably find on one of these with this kind of mileage. It's got 160 on it. That one also has 160 on it. The truck is in amazing shape. Everything works on it. Heat, AC, four wheel drive locking up. Everything in the truck works. Cruise and all the buttons and everything. So that's the Ford. The Dodge here, this one's this one's got some aftermarket stuff done to it. This thing for the most part is stock other than an exhaust and a hydro tuner on it. This truck, however, has compounds, fully built automatic transmission, big injectors, delivery valves. I mean, everything. It's got everything done to it. The paint is even aftermarket. It's a Delmonica red paint job, and the paint coat is off of like a new Ram truck. It's got aftermarket mirrors and wheels and tires and flatbed and all that stuff. So this truck is, it's, it's not a stock Dodge, and the comparison I'm gonna be making is from stock to stock, what you would have gotten from you know 96 to 97 essentially the same year you know what was the better truck at that time in the things that i would take into consideration if you were debating between buying one or the other or if you're just here for sheer entertainment enjoy the first thing we're going to touch on is interior and of course everybody knows dodge does not have the best reputation for interior build quality and i'm not going to argue with them on that for the people that are saying oh the interior build quality is not great I'll probably say of the 40 plus Dodge trucks that I've owned, a good 20% of them I've had to replace the dashes. And in some of them I've had to have seats repaired, headliners repaired, um, just stuff along the lines of that. Uh, trim pieces, you know, pillar plastics, door panels sometimes. I mean, they just have like interior switches and clips and they just do tend to have some interior flaws. I will say that. Now, coming on over to the Ford, I will say this. I've only had five OBS Ford trucks, so this is not the first one. I'm not like saying, oh, this is my thoughts on it, and I've only had one, and I've had it for you know, only a few weeks. The dashes and the door panels and the overall interiors on the truck, as simple as they are, they were made to be work trucks back in the day. This was considered like an, a nice 97, an XLT with the red interior. This was considered like one of the nicer trucks at the time. Not the nicest, but one of the nicer options. And the interior quality and the dashes and everything, they just feel more solid. They just don't feel like they're about to fall apart. And obviously this truck is, you know, 30 years old. So look at the condition of this. And that's 30 years have gone by. Um, and it's just, and obviously ownership and maintenance and all that stuff and how you care for your things plays a lot in it but i have just not seen very many listings where like the dashes are all blown apart and all the door panels are hanging off obviously that stuff can all happen depending on who's owning it maintaining it but for the most part the interior build quality on these trucks just does seem to be better and now we're going to get into transmissions the dodge again they do not have the best reputation for their automatic transmissions. Their manual transmissions, people love them. They will run them and only have to replace clutches in them for a long, long, long time. And for the most part, don't really have any kinds of major catastrophic issues other than making sure you have the fifth gear nut fixed when you go to change out your clutch at some point or before that, depending on the mileage of your truck and you just wanting to have peace of mind about it. That's always a recommendation for a manual. This is not, however, a manual, and this is not a factory automatic. This is a fully built automatic that came with a 50,000 mile warranty on it. We've probably got 15,000 miles on that warranty at most. And the thing has had zero problems with the transmission and it runs and drives and pulls and hauls like a freaking beast. This truck is a ZF5 manual transmission and the automatics and manuals in these trucks, I don't think have a horrible reputation at all. For the most part, either transmission option in these trucks have done and served very well for most people. There's always still exceptions of guys that are like, oh, transmission issues and stuff like that. But for the most part, again, it can come back to maintenance and ownership. And I feel like for the most part, these trucks, if you maintain them well, they don't really have any kinds of major transmission issues versus these ones with the automatics in them that are stock. Again, this is not a stock automatic. It's fully built with tons of upgraded internals. Stock ones, even guys that maintain them well, still at some point have had transmission problems. My wife's grandfather, for example, meticulous with maintenance on his vehicles. I mean, meticulous. And he, he had a third gen Dodge. And I think, if I'm not mistaken, it only had like a little over 110-ish thousand miles on it. And he's like fluid flushes and he does everything on his trucks to maintain them it still had transmission failure you know it's just i don't remember the exact 
circumstance under what it had. But I mean, he was blown away that had any kinds of issues because he maintains his stuff so well. But another thing to that defense, he also had a brand new second gen Dodge gas from factory brand new. He passed that truck to his son and that truck did not have any transmission issues at all until I think 260,000 miles on an original transmission on a Ram 1500 gas. So that does say something as well. And again, same owner, same maintenance, everything else. And all, it lasted that long on the original transmission by simply being taken care of. I will say overall, in terms of transmissions, the Ford would probably have the better reputation if you had to go automatic to automatic, they'd probably be the better pick. Or manual to manual, they'd probably be fairly equal in terms of overall customer feedback. But since the Ford has two wins versus one win out of the two options, I would say that's probably the overall better truck to go with for a safer transmission. And now we're gonna get into frame and body panel quality and reputations. Now again, this will also come back to maintenance and I'm gonna say that in the beginning. If you maintain your trucks properly, you fluid film the undersides and you take good care of them, you make sure that all the body panels get fluid filmed, you avoid driving them in salt as much as you can, etc. either truck will probably serve you fine. Now, what have I seen from personal experience? Dodges have more frame rot issues in very known and very consistent locations. Regardless of ownership, it seems like they have certain locations on them that are just known to rot if you do not very closely monitor and maintain them. These trucks, I don't think, have as many major frame rot issues in terms of a reputation. Of course, that can always happen again. You drive to the salt, you run it hard all the time. You never clean them, you never fluid film anything. Either one's gonna give you rust issues. But in terms of more notorious for it, I would probably say this truck. And this isn't looking good for the Dodge here because of course you guys are probably thinking, okay, you're listing these things, but you buy tons of them. I'll get into that in the very end. Now, frame issues around the frame horns, notorious inner part of the frame on either side of the transmission, that tubular section, kind of notorious. Those are the main issues, or right along the fuel tank and fuel tank straps, that area where you just can't hardly ever fluid film or coat or clean, they're just known to rust more. These trucks, I have not personally, or even from word of mouth, heard of very many locations on the frame that are like notorious for rotting. I don't know why these trucks in particular have a more notorious set of areas that are just known for rotting out versus these ones. I don't think they have as much of a reputation for like, oh, they always rot out in these spots. Like as far as I've heard from, you know, feedback from subscribers, viewers, truck people I've just talked to, they just don't have as much of a reputation for that. As long as you maintain them fairly well, they just don't have like key locations that are more known for rotting out than others. In terms of body panels, they'll both rust out if you drive into the salt and you don't maintain them. Beds, rockers, they'll, I mean, that I wouldn't say one is like way worse than the other. That's honestly more customer and owner maintenance based because you can have Dodges that are just pristine and don't have a drop of rust on the body if you just keep them clean, you don't run them through the salt and snow. Same with the Fords. In terms of running them in salt, you run either one of these through salt on a regular basis. It don't matter which one you drive, they're gonna rust. And now we're gonna get into, in my opinion, makes the biggest determining factor on which one I buy more regularly and why that is. And I'm, and I'm gonna go over as unbiased as possible and go over the truck side by side because I did grow up with a 7.3. It was a new body style 7.3. My dad had one and had almost 300,000 miles on it until my sister threw it in a ditch. Will you be an angel for a helpless animal? Every day, innocent animals are abused, beaten and neglected, and they're crying out for help. Rest in peace, Whitey. That truck, for the most part, never gave him issues until he started to park it because he got a brand new truck and then it sat all the time and it started to have some brake problems. But it wasn't even engine and mechanical failure issues. It was more just brakes would lock up after you let it sit for two or three months. Then it's like, crap, needs brakes done. Crap, needs brakes done. Like it was just all the time. It always had brakes locking up from, from just sitting. And so, but it, but it never did that until that happened. Both of these trucks, however, do not have a bad reputation. Anybody that hears about the 7.3 Power Stroke, Every Ford guy will tell you, oh my goodness, they're amazing. Even Dodge guys will say, oh yeah, I mean, if I was gonna get a Ford, I'd get a 7.3, they're amazing. In terms of the old pre-emissions trucks, that's what I'm referring to here. There's no doubt these trucks have an incredible reputation. 
these trucks are known as like the holy grail of all diesels. And that's for a few different reasons. A, they're super simple and I'm gonna get into that. But B, there's just more million mile 12 valves than like any other consumer diesel pickup truck, just your everyday consumer pickup trucks out there. I mean, I'm not talking about like big rigs and stuff like that. I'm talking about just a normal pickup truck that you or I might go out and buy and drive. There are more of these trucks of million miles than I think any other diesel ever in existence that's ever been produced. And at least from what I've heard, anybody that talks about a 12 valve, even Ford guys, I'll talk about, oh, what about a 12 valve? Other than the transmission, oh, I wouldn't buy one because of the automatic transmission. Okay, well, I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about engines, they'll be like, oh, 12 valves. I mean, they're the best. Oh, they're the best. Oh yeah, they'll run forever. Yeah, I love my Fords, but just because the overall build quality and transmission, I like them better. But man, those 12 valves, they'll run forever. These trucks just have a way better reputation of running longer. Again, these are still amazing trucks and there's nothing about this truck that I would say like, oh, don't buy one that's a bad truck. Nothing about this truck I would say is a bad truck. And it really comes down to personal finances and what you're willing to deal with. And, you know, let's sit in the back of your mind, that's a possibility. But in terms of these trucks, injectors, cheap. Turbos, cheap. Any kinds of like lines and piping and tubing and anything out of the hood, cheap. Grid heaters, set of glow plugs on this, and relays to replace, it might run you 1500 bucks for parts and install. This truck might run you $105 for like a grid heater replacement. And you don't need to hire anybody to do it because all it is is four bolts on top. You just undo four bolts, you pull the old one off, you stick the new one on it. Is that, that's it. Fuel systems, fully mechanical. There's just like, there's just like almost zero people that have ever had issues, like catastrophic issues with a P-pump on one of these trucks. VE pump's a little bit different story. Still overall great, but they, they have their issues. So overall, in terms of cost of maintenance and cost of repairs and regularity of engine and mechanical failure, this truck is just going to probably give you far less issues and far cheaper maintenance long-term than this truck. These OBS Fords, I don't know what it is. They're great trucks. Everybody that I know that has one, just they say they love them. Till the day they die, they'll drive one. However, your average cost of injectors is probably gonna run you five times more money than one of these first full set. Not to mention the complications with installing them in this truck versus this truck. Probably 10 times more things you have to do versus this truck. Glow plugs and relays, they're not as cheap to have installed or replaced. I'm just gonna sum it up. Most of the mechanics that power this truck are just going to cost you more money to fix and replace. Now again, they're not known to have a lot of issues for the most part. They're known to just run reliably for a long time. And this truck probably will run reliable for a long time for somebody. And as long as you maintain it, it's probably not gonna give you a whole lot of issues. But if you're somebody that's like, you know, I just love a Ford, I don't care if like, oh, years down the road, I might have to replace injectors and it's gonna run me five times more money. Like it's not a big deal. Personal opinion, I'd rather roll the dice with this thing. Um, even with the transmission issues in an automatic, I think I would still take my chances more with one of these just because I know the overall truck is going to be so much cheaper to maintain and fix and repair if I need to make repairs and fixes that it would outweigh the cost of oh, I'm going to get that for a better transmission. That's just that's just personal preference. And of course, I will argue this. Yes, you're right. All trucks have their issues at some point that any truck is going to give you some kind of problem. And even if you perfectly maintain everything, that perfect maintenance still costs you something. Some might take more cost to maintain and prevent problems than others, but it all costs you something, whether it's cost of maintenance, cost of repairs being cheaper. I mean, something's gonna cost you money. So it really does just come down to personal preference. My personal preference, if I had to pick between these two, I'm just, I'm just biased. I'm a little bit biased to Dodge stuff. My grandpa worked for GM, but he always bought a Dodge truck. My wife's grandpa did work for Chrysler and he always bought a Dodge truck. So we just kind of have a lot of bias there. I don't think one of these trucks is like, oh, a screaming deal better than the other one in terms of like, oh, that one's gonna give you tons of problems. That one's not gonna give you any issues or, or this one's gonna give you a ton of problems and that one's not gonna give you any issues. I think either truck is gonna have its ups and downs personal preference if I was going to buy one if you're gonna win one <laughs> they're both amazing deals so I was gonna go buy one this is just my preference that's just my preference 
just because I know that I know the kinks and quirks that they have. Probably just like a Ford guy knows the 7.3 OBS a lot better. That's why he'd pick that one, even though cost of maintenance might be a little bit higher. He that's that's the poison he's going to pick because that's what he understands. But if you don't understand diesels, you've never had one. My personal advice is if you can find one of these trucks with a five-speed manual, it's not rotted out. I would go that route. If you don't know anything about diesels, that would be my opinion. You're just going to have a lot less trial and error learning curve with one of these with a five-speed manual and a P-pump 12 valve that's in good running condition than you probably have with one of these. These can just be a little bit harder to identify problems. Um, again, unless you really know your stuff and just if you do have problems or when you have problems, they are just more expensive. Not They're not bad trucks. I'm just letting you know from personal experience. They are just more expensive to maintain with issues. So personal preference and what it comes down to, let me know in the comment section below, which one would you pick and why? Which truck do you think is the better truck? And I want you to give your explanation. Let me know in the comments. Anything that I missed on these that you would like to know, add it down below, help people out that are looking into these trucks. They wanna know which one would be the better buy for somebody getting into diesels or somebody that doesn't know much about them. Help each other out in the comment section below. Maybe argue a little bit. Have some fun. Anyways, guys, thanks so much for watching. If you want to get entered to win both of these trucks at the same time, giveaway does end on Sunday. So all you got to do is hit the link, go to lnpgear.com, place an order on the site, and as soon as you order, you're automatically entered to win. Keep in mind, every $1 more that you spend gets you another 30 entries into the giveaway, and your entries are doubled into both giveaways. So it's basically like a 60 times bonus because if you get 5,000, for example, on this truck, you're also getting 5,000 on that one which means you're essentially getting 10,000 entries if it says 5,000 because you're getting into both giveaways with the same amount of entries doubled. So anyways, guys, thanks so much for all the love and all the support, and I'll catch you in the next video. Peace.